Comic Book Savant, episode 334. I know this. This I know. All that I have, all that is me, resides inside my poetry. And every time I write a rhyme, it might be the line that sets mine free. And also, I know that... Welcome to the Comic Book Savant. I'm your host, James Harris. This week, we're going to be doing a series spotlight. I'm going to be talking about a uh, Punisher series that came out through Marvel a few, a couple of years ago now. Uh, it was done by uh, Nathan Edmondson and Mitch Gerard were the main creative team with Corey Pettit on the uh, lettering. Um, it was the Punisher. It was a follow-up to the series that was done not too long uh, before uh, from Greg Rucka. Um, before I get into that, as always, I'd like to give a shout-out to my friends over at the Comics Podcast Network. You can find them over at comicspodcast.com. If you like podcasts or comic book-related podcasts, like I assume you do since you listen to one, you're listening to one right now, uh, if you have an extra moment, stop by the Comics Podcast Network. Um, it's a great place to just find more related content. If you love comic books and you're looking for new shows to, to listen to, it's a good portal or one-stop shop to find more uh, more content. It's so many different. It's literally hundreds of different uh, comic book related podcasts there. You can find uh, um, different ones based on publisher, characters, uh, teams. It's a real huge gambit of um, of shows that you can find there. So if you have a moment, definitely stop over to the Comics Podcast Network over at comicspodcast.com. And last but not least, let's give a shout out to the sponsor for this and every episode, which is instocktrades.com. If you're not familiar with instocktrades.com, it's one of the best places you can go online when you're looking for collected editions, hardcovers, omnibus, masterwork editions, absolute editions, you name it, they have it. If it's bound or collected editions of, of, of comics, they have uh, great deals. They have discounts ranging from 35 to 42, up to 50% off with their deals the week. Um, they update the site weekly with, with the new deals. Uh, currently, uh, the five deals they have listed, they have the Avengers Epic Collection Trade Paperback Masters of Evil, um, 50% off, only $19.99. Um, they also have Batman Two-Face, uh, Two-Face, Face to Face, the uh, Deluxe Hardcover Edition. That is uh, 50% off, $17.49. We have um, Flash by Mark Wade Trade Paperback Book 2, uh, which is 50% uh, off at $17.49. We have Red Hood and the Outlaws Trade Paperback Volume One. This is the first of the uh, the Rebirth uh, collection. It's uh, Dark Trinity. Um, that one is fifty percent off, only eight dollars and forty nine cents. And for the big kickoff for the uh, huge Marvel event that's happening this summer, we have uh, Secret Empire Prelude Trade Paperback, which that's a hot you know hot commodity right now because that's just really starting to kick off in the comics for this their their big summer event. Uh, so this would be one to pick up if you're behind and you want to get in the know before the main event really kicks off. That's 50% off 1749. So it has some really good deals for their deals of the week. So definitely stop by, check them out. Um, Again, if you're a U.S. customer and you place an order of $50 or more, you get free shipping within the U.S., but it's only for U.S. customers. If you're an international customer, you still get all the great deals and savings. You just don't get that bonus. But they do have some of the most competitive um, international shipping rates that you can find. So there's definitely something that you can still partake on and save a ton of money. So if you have a moment, check out InStockTrades.com. Uh, I thank them. We just did a contest where we gave away a 20, uh, $25 uh, gift certificate. So they're very supportive to the show. Uh, listener Ryan King, he, he got that gift certificate. He actually even posted on Instagram uh, <clears throat> what he ordered, which is cool. So we're going to be doing more promotions like that. And it's not that I... Um, it's been anything with them. It's just been with me. Um, I haven't done as many promos and things like that over the past little while. So I'm looking to, 
uh, do more of those upcoming. We're going to have one coming probably towards the end of the summer, sometime in August when it's um, getting close to the, the, um, the 11 year anniversary show. I'll kick off another promotion and do something a little bit bigger than the $25 one, hopefully at that point. So be on the lookout as that comes towards the end of the summer. Um, again, they've been a great partner to work with. They've really been supportive to the show and to you guys um, supporting them to help me. So um, expect more of those kind of promotions and things coming in the future for sure. Um, again, like I said, I've kind of slacked in that area, and I do apologize because it would be some way that I can give back to you guys for helping me keep the show afloat and to support it so much and helping it grow. So be on the lookout for that stuff in the future. Um <clears throat> Excuse me. Now back to the uh, the topic at hand, which is the Punisher. Again, this book came out. I want to say like this time moves so fast now. I want to say maybe two, three years ago. It only had a twenty issue run. Um, it was published by Marvel. Like I said, um, we're going to be talking about. I covered a few of the issues before. Um, I think I've read like the first trade worth one through six and I reviewed them in different cutting the stack episodes I've, I've done. I wanted to give a spotlight to the series because I went back and I read issues seven all the way through 20, the, the uh, series finale. Now they've already relaunched a, uh, another Punisher book since then. And Punisher is like most characters. They always keep a Punisher book in circulation and do different Runs. I don't. I can't even remember at this point what volume this Punisher series is. I want to say when I was researching, it was like volume nine. They've had so many different, distinct runs of of the Punisher. Um, Punisher has always been one of my uh, favorite Marvel characters. It's always a weird thing with the Punisher. Um, with his different runs and how he fits into the Marvel universe because of the true nature. Cause in a, you know, the Punisher started as a villain in the Marvel universe and the, you know, going into the, from the, cause I want to say he premiered in Spider-Man in the late seventies, very, very early eighties. If I remember correctly, cause I was a small kid. I remember, seeing reading his first appearance in Sp- amazing spider-man my um i had a cousin that was really into comics and he had it i just remember the visual of the punisher with the skull on the chest and him with the guns and him being that you know assassin uh mercenary kind of character he was so at the time revolutionary and groundbreaking in comics now it's you know the punisher has been the template for so many different characters in a way you wouldn't have characters like Deadpool if you didn't have the Punisher coming years before. He's been a template for, like I said, a whole archetype of characters at, you know, at this point in, in, in comics. Uh, but at the time, he was really groundbreaking. But because of that, at, t- at times, you know, he's kind of a anti-hero, vigilante to an extreme. Um, it's hard to place him sometimes. So I felt like... Um, Greg Rucka series that came right before it start playing with the Punisher um, being kind of on the fringe of the Marvel universe and, and, you know, interacting with that. And then it led his, his series ran into um, a big crossover with the Avengers where the Avengers were called in to kind of put down um, the Punisher in a way. Um, and I think it was Punisher war zone where Punisher went up against the, Avengers, which I started reading and I haven't finished reading it. Um, the thing that I thought that was kind of cool about that is that um, Nathan Edmondson did a really good job of um, he used some of the remnants of that series um, in some of these issues, which I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about a little bit later. But just to give you some background through these issues, um, pretty much all of them were Nathan Edmondson. I think it was one or two issues that were, was done by Kevin uh, Maurer. Um, but Nathan Edmondson has been around for a little while. He's done a lot of stuff. Uh, he's bounced around between, you know, image. He's done a really popular series that I've heard a lot about, but I've never had a chance to read, which is who is Jake Ellis. And then he did a follow-up series. Where is Jake Ellis over at image? Um, when the new 52 first kicked off um, and this is where he kind of got on my radar. He did the first, um, I want to say, I don't even know if it was six issues or maybe four, but when, um, the, 
the new 52 kicked off. He wrote grifter. They had a grifter comic, a short lived grifter comic. Um, he did like three or four issues. I really liked them. Um, then they replaced him on, on the writer and then the book was shortly there canceled. That was really good. Um, he's uh, done a series over at image, the activity, um, very much he's very much into the the spy espionage um uh assassin kind of world and in that way as well he reminds me a lot of greg rucka they really are into that that material and they handle it so well and they feel like they you know i feel like they they know it well i don't know what um influences i know greg rucka knows you know, individuals and have contacts from people that are inside the the CIA and the FBI. So he has that level of authenticity. I don't know if um, uh, Nathan Edmondson has similar connections or what his background is, because I haven't really seen many or, or any interviews with him to know his full background. But he, he definitely has a passion um, and he makes it very grounded and realistic. Um, so he's done that activity. Um, he also, at the time he was writing this Punisher series, he was also, uh, writing Black Widow, which ran for, I want to say 20 issues as well. He did a short run on Deathlock. He did a short run on Red Wolf. So he's, he's written a lot of different, a lot of different things for a lot of different publishers. And he's met with quite a bit of success. Um, some of the artists that worked on, on the, the issues and on the series is, um, the main, his main collaborator is Mitch Gerards, which he's worked on where's Jake Ellis, the activity and as well as the Punisher. So they've collabed on a lot of different projects that they've worked on and they, they have a really good, uh, you know, uh, chemistry together as far as writer and artist. Uh, some of the other ones that did some fill in stuff. We had, um, Carmen, uh, Canero, um, uh, more, uh, more, uh, more, Tat, more Tat, I hope I pronounced it correctly. Brent Schoonover, Felix Ru- uh, Ruiz were other artists that worked on, like did fill in spots here and there through, through the, through the series colorist, primarily Mitch Gerards. He, he handles all, all the artwork on the issues that he works on. Uh, but when the fill ins, we had colors done by Antonio Fabella, Veronica, uh, Gennady, Matthew Wilson and uh, Andy W. Clift as well, and lettering all done by Corey Pettit. The main issues, and we talked about again, are issue seven through the finale uh, of uh, issue twenty is covered in two trades. Primarily, um, the first trade covers issues seven through twelve, and Black Widow issue nine. Um, and this Punisher volume two border border crossing and the breakdown for that story is, um, it's a story of jungle warfare. American soldiers are being held by a South American drug Lord. Uh, when a new prisoner, if I can talk prisoner <laughs> arrives, Frank castle, but not all is as it seems on either side of the bars uh, uh, and excuse me. But not as all as it seems on either side of the bars. And now a wounded Frank and a special forces medic must uh, hazard dangerous terrain and merciless mercenaries to escape. Uh, Then the Punisher finds himself fighting alongside or against uh, Black Widow for access to deadly for a deadly uh, criminal network. But can either survive being being trapped on a um, abandoned oil rig with crossbones in his uh, skull squad. And back in Los Angeles, a new crime Lord with a personal vendetta against Frank castle has arisen and the howling commandos sets their sights on Frank. Can a punisher save his adopted home? Um, and I'll talk about the individual stories in a minute. The next uh, story or the next trade is Punisher Volume 3, uh, Last Days. And this collects issues 13 through 20, which is the series finale. The breakdown for this is as follows. The Howling Commandos have gone a step too far. They have Frank Castle's only remaining family sequestered in the Los Angeles Hotel. As the city erupts into chaos, Frank's, uh, Frank brings the fight in most of LA and most of LA's gangs to them. As Frank uh, follows the trail of corruption all the way to the nation's capital, he finds himself up against a force that will test his morals, his resolve, and the fiber—excuse me—in his fiber, fiber as a soldier, with uh, the Punisher 
on a government hit list? Has Frank walked into the lion's den or can he find find the man pulling the strings before Captain America stops him? Frank Castle is out for punishment and his long quest for vengeance is nearly nearly at an end. But the clock is ticking and uh, his plans uh, to go out with the bang, not a whimper. Um, this was a really, really good series um, throughout. It, I remember when I reviewed the first few issues. Um, I immediately wanted a follow up because I did. I love Greg Rucka and I, I wanted his run to continue. Um, it couldn't for numerous reasons. Um, so when it ended, I was in my feelings about it. Um, but this had a slow, you know, burn in the very beginning, the first few issues. Again, coming off of that, I wanted more of that. Um, and it eventually gave it to you, but in the, you know, he had to establish his own style and his own var- variations. They moved, you know, the Punisher from New York out to LA. So that was a little different, but it was interesting seeing, um, the effects that, um, someone like the Punisher and with him being such a mass destructive force, cause he's so blind in his quest for vengeance against crime that, um, it will tend to have effects, massive effects on the, the area around him and it can affect many people. And they did this very, very good examination on what effect does Frank Castle have on a city? Um, you know, and they, they do this with him being in LA, the effect that he comes in on the scene and start cleaning up the gang situation, um, you know, and, and how it triggers in between there, uh, uh, up and coming drug Lord uses him as cover in a way, him coming, emerging in the city to stage a coup, to take over the drug game. Um, um, I like how, uh, Edmondson brought in, um, different, incorporated different parts of the Marvel universe throughout it. Uh, the first story arc, we, we, we see uh, the pun the, you know, the drug trade, the drug Lord brings in electro. So you see someone like electro, not a super Omega level, you know, villain. I mean, I guess how you can consider electro, he could be that powerful. And he was portrayed as a threat. Um, you, you know, but he it wasn't like Punisher was fighting Thanos. They kind of brought it in because the electro's always kind of been more, a uh, lower level ground level villain but an amped up one because he does have power so that was cool seeing uh, the Punisher which is notes that were set up in um, in Rucka's Punisher run where he fought um, uh, uh, um, like a mutated vulture you know character so they, they had him so it was uh, it was a precedent already set up that they carried through how they brought Electro and incorporated him in felt natural um, felt good. It was good to see someone outside of New York. Always like that. You know, they've done it at part, parts with Daredevil where like he's gone out West and went to, what was it? San Francisco. You've done it with Moon Knight. Well, he, he went out to LA, um, you know, so they did it with the Punisher, which was, which, which was cool. I don't know where the Punisher is located in this newest run. Um, uh, it didn't catch my interest at all, so I haven't checked any of it out yet. Uh, maybe eventually I'll get to it, but right now it's, yeah, I, I haven't checked it out. Um, so it was it was interesting with that incorporation, the use of the they brought this new iteration of the Highland Commandos and incorporated them into the series. That was was very very murky and very interesting, and, and they were very good foils because their collective together. Um, was like a perfect um, adversary for someone like the Punisher, him going against this elite team and just him, um, you know, and them, their collective was an equivalent to kind of like him amped up. Um, and they were kind of murky. They weren't like Nick, you know, Nick Fury and the Howling Commandos back in the day. They're definitely a more modern, uh, extreme kind of take on that vision from this, you know, back in the sixties and earlier with the Nick Fury and the Howling Commandos for sure. Um, incorporating, you know, other characters like Black Widow and them making direct reference and ties to uh, the Punisher Warzone limited series that ended uh, Rucka's run that, you know, you know, it touched on the fact of events that happened there 
Um, so he picked up plot threads that was left by the previous writer, incorporated it as his own. And plus he was writing black widow at the time. So it was, it was very seamless and it, it was, um, very well handled, uh, that, that crossover and that, that storyline, that plot line, um, even incorporating Sam Wilson, Captain America in there and playing up the political side. They always deal with Frank more so as, you know, he was a, you know, I don't know what origin they've gone with now because it's, it's been played with so many different times. But, you know, depending on what version of the Punisher, you know, he was, you know, in the military, he was, you know, a cop. And, you know, it's always like his, you know, his family got murdered by mobsters. And that's where, what kicked off his vendetta against crime. So they, they focus on that. But he was a soldier and a very good soldier and a very highly decorated soldier, um, depending on, you know, what origin you're looking at, either back in Vietnam or in the Gulf War, whatever. They've, they've played with, you know, the origin and updated it a few times over the years. So depending where, but he was a war veteran. So bringing in the political aspect and things that happened in L.A., um, how he was framed, how they went after him, you know, they, you know, they know how the Punisher reacts at this point and they kind of manipulated the situation appropriately around him to use him as a scapegoat for political means. So I liked tying things back into the political side of it because at the very core of the character, he was born of war and was a soldier and they normally don't touch on, um, it's been a while where they don't really touch on, that aspect of or that side of his character, again, where it was um, something that goes to the the very uh, core and essence of the character, which again were were built up more so from plot threads. I feel like from um, Rucka's run with the um, what's her name, the female character that that was a military um, person that you know her her husband on her wedding day. You know, it was a like the Red Wedding from um, Game of Thrones kind of event that triggered her. And she kind of became a female Punisher. Um, but it, they had that tie between them because of their um, their um, military backgrounds. And um, you see some of it here with a police officer, even that character from the other Punisher run, she shows up. So it wasn't, I, and that's one thing I like, Ed, Edmondson really made this his own, but it was in so many ways, by the time you get to the end of the series, it's very much a spiritual successor, not a direct sequel, but a spiritual uh, sequel to um, what Rucka did on his run, which was also a short run as well. So I would have to accompany the two. If you read this one to go back and read that one again, I want to say if this one was 20 issues, the Rucka one might be 20, 20 as well, or like 24. Um, then you had the, um, Punisher war zone four issue series. Um, so you can get all this together, less than 50 issues. And it's, well worth reading if you like um the punisher um like i said him and mitch gerard has a very good chemistry there's gerard's um, pencils marry very nicely with the words of um edmondson it gives it a real grounded gritty and cinematic feel like you know when when I look at, again, look at him and Rucker's run together, they could take these books and run with it on the, the Netflix series. I don't know what they're going to pull for. I know it's already been filmed, but we know that the Punisher Netflix series is going to be coming soon. I'm real curious to see because I felt like these were really great grounded stories that they could do that could fit in that universe that could be adapted very easily over Um so I, I'm curious to see where they might go and hope maybe they pull some threads from these two runs because they, they would work perfectly um, converting over to the small screen. Um, this run by uh, Edmondson and Gerard to me ranks up there with some of my favorite. I'm a huge Chuck Dixon fan. Um, his run from, you know, the 80s um, stands out. Garth Ennis's first run. Um, with, with Punisher, I loved in Greg Rucker's run. And like I said, this very much so plays together with that run as I would kind of call it one 
kind of um, magnum opus of, of a more modern day Punisher, the more Punisher I would like to see more of. Um, again, I know the ser- the newer series, I, I don't know what it, where it's at. I felt like they went more back to the the Max Punisher, which I really don't like because I think it's, it's too much. I like Punisher being a more accessible book and having him have an effect on the Marvel Universe because he does exist there. And, and the thing with him, you can pull him so far out of it, but I like it when he's on the fringe and he deals with it like Electro, Highland Commandos, Black Widow, Captain America. I like that vibe because he's a part of it. And I would like to see how other heroes, how he works with other heroes, um, this, you know, in his effect on the world because he's out there and he's not just arresting people, he's killing people. You have to acknowledge it. So I like the the threads in those two series of Ruckus and Edmondson where it shows the cause and effect of his actions and what what it does to the people around him as well as himself because he's been killing people for so long and on this vendetta in it has to take a toll. Um, and how do you govern it as um, far as government, local government, and national government? Um, it's a problem. So it's an interesting character study and a study on society as well on the effects of it. Um, so all those things really, you know, make it unique for me. And because and sometimes you need that palate cleanser of, just the superhero stuff. And, and this is not superhero. This is like grounded. And this is what I like about series like the Punisher, how they kind of do daredevil, you know, at times where he's in the Marvel universe, but he's kind of off to the, to the side. So books like this daredevil moon Knight, that can kind of dip in and out of it and have elements pulled in, but it's not, they're not a part of every major crossover and everything else. They can have their own thing would exist in that same world. Um, for me, this series is a must buy. Um, again, if you're a fan of the Rucka series, you must have this as an accompany to it. Cause again, it is a spiritual successor to it. Um, the three trades and I'll have links in the show notes for all of these. You can get the, it's three, it's only three trades and I'm going to do another updated list. Cause I've done a, I've done an episode um, and I'll put it in the show notes. I have to find what episode it was of sh- great short run comics. I need to update that um, that list. This would definitely go on short run. These this is great stories that that you can um, you know get fifty issues or less and get a wonderful story. Again, three trades, twenty um, twenty issues. First trade is Punisher Volume 1, Black and White. I'll have links to in-stock trades as well as comic sociology. So if you want to get it um, get it physical or digital, you can get it. Um, Punisher Volume 2, Border Crossing. I'll have links to both. And Punisher Volume 3, Last Days. I'll have links to all that in the show notes on the website, comicbooksavant.com. Definitely, like I said, a must-buy. Get these, read them. I think you'll really enjoy them. Uh, especially if you like, again, even if you don't, if you haven't read the previous stuff and you enjoyed what you saw the, of the Punisher in uh, Daredevil season three, you or, or was it season two? Season two, season three, season two, whatever. Season two of Punisher of Daredevil with the Punisher, you will definitely like reading this. Um, so it's not any huge barrier if you've seen the Punisher on Daredevil season two and you liked it, you could pick this up and read it and get that same, um, that same vibe and, and could jump right on and, and, and really enjoy it. Um, uh, what can I say? That's all I have for you guys this week. Uh, again, hit up the, um, comics podcast network at comicspodcast.com. Check out in stock trades.com. Uh, go over to the website. I've done work. I added a search bar on the website, which since, you know, we've, we're at 334 episodes in, in growing. It is a lot. If you want to see if I covered a topic before, go to the website. You can just type it in, in this, in the search box. And if I've done any topic, you'll, you'll see it, you know, you just it, it pulls it right up or the list of episodes where I talked about whatever particular subject, it really works well. Um, Again, it's a huge catalog. Again, it, it blows my, it boggles my mind sometimes when I think about. You know, I've done 334 episodes. You know, that's a that's a pretty long 
run for, you know, for any podcast, but a single person podcast, some tends to fade and I've faded at times and, and bounce back, but I've been fairly consistent over, you know, the past, you know, I want to say like three, four years have, have been really consistent and, and plugged away and done a lot of stuff. So it's a lot of content. So if it's, if you ever wonder about if I covered a particular subject or topic, just go to the website, search there, and, and if I have, you'll find it. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Comic Book Savant, Instagram at Comic Book Savant. You can also, it's a Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Comic Book Savant. I love you guys. You guys have been giving me a lot of likes on the page. So I know you guys are listening and you're coming up there. And I'm getting a lot of thumbs up and likes, um, even some comments. Uh, on the, the Facebook page. I so appreciate the love. Um, you know, Instagram, I'm getting more and more followers there. Give me a follow. That's the main platform that I'm on right now is uh, Instagram. I, I kind of um, blast my stuff out from there to the other different me, uh, social media platforms because I can actually understand that. I understand Instagram better than I understand Twitter for whatever reason. So I'm on Instagram. So give me a follow. If you want to follow me anywhere, follow me on Instagram. Um, the YouTube page is up. No new content. I think my first video will be, um, I might do an extended review or some type of review when it comes next week, when guardians of the galaxy, uh, comes out, I've done some test video, still trying to figure out how I want to do it. It's a nerve wracking thing because you know, I'm hiding behind a microphone here. You guys seeing me and learning lighting and video recording. It's a chore, but I think I'm going to do a little video um, when I when I do the review for uh, Guardians Volume 2. Uh, I think that'll be a good jump off video to do. So it probably will be a companion piece to the actual audio episode I'll do. So be on the lookout for that. But it, it's YouTube forward slash comic book savant. You can go listen to episodes there as well again um if you have a moment check out itunes leave a review for the show really would appreciate that um whatever reviews you leave there i'll read on the show to give you guys a shout out but like i said i really really can't say enough how much i appreciate you guys support um it's been a blast like i said seeing um you guys hit me up on the different social media um and um on Facebook, like that, that Facebook thing is like, I get a few likes, you know, every week, more and more likes and things like that. So it's, it's good to let me know, seeing you guys respond on those different platforms and let me know that you guys are out there. It, it means so much to when you're a podcaster, because, um, you know, you do these shows and you put them out, but you never know, like, you know, you see numbers, but when you start communicating with the people behind those numbers, it means so much and it, it motivates me to, to work harder and put out more and greater content. So I don't know if you guys really understand that connection. Like we need that feedback from you guys. We need that communication. Let's you know that it's faces behind those, those numbers. So it's, it's very imperative, you know, that, you know, what you guys do means a lot to what I do. Um, I hope you guys have a good week. Enjoy yourself. Like I said, if you owe yourself a treat, check out, this Punisher series, Nathan Edmondson, fantastic writer, um, Mitch Gerard's fantastic artist, really top notch effort. So I was, I'm pissed that it ended only after 20 issues, but it was a good, tight, consistent run. And be on the lookout. Like I said, I'm going to do an updated short comics run uh, episode. Another, I don't know if it's going to be a top 10 list or, or not. It might be longer than top 10, it might be top 20 updated list so to give you guys some shorter run comics that you can check out and really enjoy but until next week i uh, will see you guys later have a good week and into lyrical wholeness and i know this and i know this this i know this i know